Today, I'm going to show you how to do this clone effect. Like always, before we head on to Premiere Pro and After Effects, we're going to break out what we're going to be doing today. So first, we're going to speed ramp the clip. I'm going to want the clip to be slowed down to where I want the clone to happen. And then for the second step, we're going to rotoscope our subject. Third, make our duplicates. And that's what's going to give us the clones. And then keyframing. And then lastly, just some extra stuff to go over that you could do to the clones to make it look a certain way. But yeah, let's head on to Premiere Pro. So I already have a clip selected. I'm going to be using Justin Wright Foreman's dunk here if it decides to load. So I already have a clip selected. It's going to be this dunk here by Justin Wright Foreman. So I'm going to want the clone to happen just at this moment right here. We're going to add the clones there and then it'll go away as soon as the clip speeds up again. Perfect. Now let's head on to After Effects. Oh yeah, to slow down your footage. I guess I didn't go over that. If you want to slow down your footage in Premiere Pro, right click this effects button, time remapping, click speed, and this will bring this up. And then if you press P, it'll bring up the pen tool, and then you can make your keyframes as to where you want to slow it down. This was filmed in 120 frames per second, so I can slow it down up to 20%. So this is how it looks slowed down. But yeah, depending on what your clip is, where you want to slow it down, this is what you would do in Premiere Pro. Okay, now that we're done our speed ramping, we're going to head on to After Effects to do our rotoscoping. Okay, perfect. So first step is we're going to rotoscope the footage. So first step, we are going to rotoscope the footage. To rotoscope the footage, you're going to look for the icon at the top left of this tab here. Look for the stick man with the brush. Double click your layer. Make sure the beginning of your clip. And then, oops. Yeah, now we're just going to highlight our player here. You know, that looks pretty clean to me. Okay, so once you have your subject selected and masked out, you're going to click freeze. And then After Effects will do the job for you. It's rotoscoping pretty well, honestly. You might not have to redo it. Damn. Beautiful rotoscope. This is honestly, I think what's going to take the longest to do this effect, depending on your clip, depending on how, how big your file is and depending how long your clip is. And then everything else is honestly pretty simple. But yeah, our rotoscope looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to redo it. There are some parts that I could kind of clean up, like especially the part where the shoe doesn't. But I honestly won't do the clone until this part probably. So that's okay. And then up to that part, it's pretty clean. But if in your clip, there are some really bad masks, just click the freeze button again, unfreeze it, and then you can mask out again. So just click and drag to add and then hold option if you want to subtract from the mask. So yeah. If this part's going to be important, that's where I'm going to do the clone. Perfect. And what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this. Name the bottom layer background. Name the upper layer roto scope. And then for the background layer, delete the roto brush. And I want the clone to happen right about here. So honestly, we're just going to cut this. And then we're going to duplicate this. Clone one. And then we're going to make two clones. So make another duplicate. Name it clone two. And then I want the clones to pop out outside of the rotoscope so we're gonna put the rotoscope at the top layer okay so this is where i want the clone to pop so we're gonna select clone one and clone two press p it'll bring up the position keyframes set a keyframe here copy it and then go to the end and paste it because that's where we're gonna end up there's that's where we want to end up again anyway and then near the center paste it again and then here this is when we're going to move it this one right here Let's see how that looks. So as you see the clones popping out, but obviously it's coming back a little too fast. So we're going to want it to hold there until the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy these keyframes and paste it. So it's going to hold and then come back. See how that looks. I think I want it to start earlier. So we're going to take these frames and move it up. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Okay, perfect. Now that we see the clones, or now it doesn't look as cool, but we're going to fix that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these keyframes and ease it. So right click keyframe assistant and select easy ease. Same here, right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. So let's see how that looks now. It feels better. And if you want, you can also select these keyframes and then select the graph editor. If you want to be, if you want to change a little bit more of how it should look. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do is take 
select both clones, and turn on motion blur for both. Oh yeah. Clean, clean, clean. Nice. Looks better already, just with the motion blur. Okay, and then, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the clone effect. And then we're just gonna add some extras. I'm just gonna give you guys some options that you wanna do to kind of sauce it up. Okay, so sometimes I like to change it up and make the clones look like holograms. So what I will do is take clone one and clone two, turn the opacity down to about 50. It already, it already kind of gives that hologramic look. Then you can add, you could add Gaussian blur, turn it up to about, let's see, let's try 10. That 10 looks pretty good. So copy and paste that to the other clone. And there you go. That just cleans up the clone and makes it look cleaner and has that hologram effect look. And then if you want, what I'll do is we're going to add saturation effect onto the background. If you want another thing you could do is as it warps out, just to kind of emphasize the effect, what I will do is make a keyframe for the saturation to 100 and then keyframe it to zero as it wipes out and then make another keyframe and then bring it back to 100 when the clones go back to where they were. There you go. And if you want to emphasize the switch too, I'm going to use Shake Sauce for this. Again, I'll put the link down in the description. If you want to get Shake Sauce, this is a paid plugin. We're going to try keyframed one. Let's try, let me try Twitch. I like Twitch usually. bit too much so we're just gonna bring in the keyframes just so it ends faster nice okay so i like how that looks now that shake into the clone and then back and then you can even add as he dunks it you could add another shake there clone dunk and then if you want to you can select all your layers Recompose it and then I'm going to go as the clone happens. We're going to set a scale keyframe and then we're going to get it to scale in to let's say 150. And then just frames and then go back to 100. Let's see how that looks. And there you go. And that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I probably would add some more things to this, but this you can build off of this. Maybe add some glow, a lot of different options you could do. But this is a great start. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this tutorial. Till next time, again, let me know what other tutorials you guys would like to see. Just let me know down in the comments below. And we'll see you at the next.